Hi everyone, and welcome back to another um, anti-post uh, preview where I'm going to be putting up a couple of bets for you to go along with the anti-post portfolio that we've already got going. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've uh, put one or two up, so um, yeah, I wanted to see what happened at the racing festival at uh, Dublin the, the last weekend before I put anything up, and just get a couple of clues. Uh, both my selections today happened to be ones that didn't run last weekend, but it was it's quite informative as the Dublin Racing Festival, so I was just waiting basically to see what happened there. Uh, just a couple of points. We've obviously got quite a lot of really short priced hot favourites in a majority of the big uh, grade ones at the festival and it can be quite easy to get sucked into putting large multiple bets on five folds, six folds, etc, uh, etc. Et Bit of a retirement job. But, you know, they are the prices that they are and some of these horses you're probably better off now waiting to um, back on the day. Um, I do get quite a few questions about what would be your best lucky 15, your best multiple bet. If I had to put one on now, I'd keep it fairly small. I'd only keep it down to... Um, well, I'll give you two anyway. I would put a treble on. The bank of treble for me at the minute, and one of these races happens to be a race that I'm putting the selection up in today, but for the sake of my portfolio, I won't be back in the, um, the favourites. But if I was to put a multiple on right now, I think you can't go wrong with an Envoy Allen, Monkfish, and Shack and Passoir treble. I think those three horses are very, very solid don't really have an awful lot of competition in behind in that there's a fair gulf to the horses that will line up in behind them they're just much more talented animals and i think all the other short price favorites have got either questions to answer or good competition in behind and those three for me are the solid three so i, would, I wouldn't put you off putting a decent treble on that and slightly bigger odds but still favorite second favorite the other one I would probably go with is a treble again on an Ergamine for the Arkle, who I do think will beat Shishkin. Kuni Sukkul for the Champion Hurdle, who I do think will win the Champion Hurdle. And Album Photo for the Gold Cup. You're talking 3-1 to one for Album, 11-4 for an Ergamine and 5-2, to 11-4 for Honey Suckle. I think that's a decent treble as well. Uh, slightly bigger odds, not as a bank of material as, as the, the first one, but yeah, I just wouldn't get too carried away with, um, you know, if you are having daft multiple bets and whatever, keep your stakes low because, you know, something, all these horses aren't 100% guaranteed to get there for one. Um, never mind actually go on and win as well. And the, the last year, the festival threw up all sorts of surprises. So just, just keep it steady, is all I would say on that. Uh, okay, enough about that, we'll get straight on to. Uh, the first selection of two today, I've got two, two bets coming in. I've actually got three picked out. One I'm just waiting for without market to open up um, that's that's not out yet um, in the RSA. But today the first bet is in the Albert Bartlett. Um, a race I've been looking at for quite a while and had a couple of horses picked out. I was waiting for the weekend to see if anything stood out in the novice uh, two miles seven or I think it was at, at uh, Dublin. And just going through uh, the market and what happened at the weekend, the ones that I think will end up going to the Albert Bartlett, we've still got a lot of dual entries between the Ballymore and the Albert Bartlett, as, as you always do. Uh, we've got Statler at the top of the market, currently around the eight to nine to one mark. He's a horse that, doesn't really interest me for this race if I'm honest he, I just can't see him I, I, everybody says he really wants the three mile I just didn't see it the last day I just thought he was very tired jumping the last which made him make a mistake and he was tired all the way in he didn't show to me as though he's a horse that will absolutely deliver at the three mile uh, distance so I left him alone Fakira is a horse that I think has uh, I, I do agree with what a lot of people are saying that he wants the three mile but for me, he's just going to be a horse that's just going to be out of the race before he, before he gets to deliver that stamina. You know, this guy probably wants four mile rather than three mile. He seems to stay forever. But he just seems to be in a position within the race where his race is running. He's got too much to do, even with a staying type. He's just got too much to make up. 
and I don't think he can keep himself in contention close enough to the front where he's going to end up winning the race. Um, that's my opinion on him. One that I did pull from the weekend, which I think is quite a good selection, and I know Marco, I do quite a few videos with, is quite keen on him, and that's Gentleman's Game. I thought he ran a cracking race last week, considering he only ran in the maiden hurdle, and straight into a grade one like that was very, very good. He stayed on, he will get the three mile, I'm pretty sure this is where he'll end up going, and um, I couldn't put anybody off uh, backing him, quite liked him. Um, then you've got a lot of um, horses in there. You've got your winner from last weekend, Gilad de Manil. He's probably going to end up in the in the um, Ballymore. You've got other horses in there. I won't go through the full field, but we're probably going to end up in the Ballymore. And you've even got horses in here that are probably going to end up in the Supreme. Um, the two that I had picked out and I'm going to stick with uh, that didn't run in that race. Uh, the first one is Gordon Elliott's Tory Graph. Um, he won at Thurles the last day, beating Fighter Allen, Heather Rocco and Angel's Dawn in a short, uh, a small field, should I say. He's been a different proposition since been up to in trip. He went to the, his last couple of runs have been at the two mile seven distance. And um, judging by how he's finished his races, he's going to be a cracker at three miles. So uh, he beat El Velvet Elvis at Fairy House, who's come out and won since. And he beat him by 13 lengths. So I think... That was one of the horses I boiled down to. In the end, it be between the two, I nearly split my bet here. I nearly backed them both, um, half the stakes each way. But instead, I've just decided to go for uh, an English Raider, which is we need something that we need at the minute because we are, um, we are right behind uh, the eight ball in terms of um, the amount of hot priced Irish winners there, there is looking likely to be. So we need a couple of English Raiders to pop up and I think this is one of the races where we can do so. And my selection in this race is for uh, Paul Nichols and that is in the infamous big books colours. Um, we have Barbados books. Um, he's won th uh, three starts over three mile at Kempton and two at Southall. Um, three fantastic runs and since being stepped up to that from the he ran at two mile six on his uh, debut in a maiden hurdle where he was second he stepped him up in the trip and he's looked absolutely sensational since um the last run i was really really impressed with and i'm going to show you a little clip of that last run uh right now where you'll be able to see how strong he actually finishes his race and you know i, I just get the impression that once once he gets to that hill at cheltenham um he's, he's going to He's gonna relish it and he's gonna show his show his staying ability. You see him here coming in the second last through you know, there's four of them in total. He's got three horses close to him and he just gets away from the, the field coming to the last. Um he, he, like I say, he just seems like a real a real true stayer to me and he, he gets a good jump in at the last day. Um uh, for Delta in second place, just seems to be maybe come back at him a bit. Harry Cobden gives him a slap or two, and uh, away he goes. A really strong finish and leaves him leaves him for dead in the end. So yeah, I can just I can see him putting in a true performance in this in this race, and he will be my uh, my selection. Um, this don't worry about backing favourites in this race. This fair this race is renowned for throwing up decent priced winners. In fact, twelve to one's quite short for the price of winners that this has thrown up in the past. Uh, we've had a fifty to one shot has won this. Two thirty three to ones, a sixteen to one, a fourteen to one, and an eleven to one all in the last twelve years. Um, so not very often that you get favourites, second favourites and third favourites winning this race. So don't worry about taking a punt at something at a price. Like I said, Tory Graph would be my other, would be my other pick in this. Um, but yet for the sake of the anti-post um, selections and anti-post portfolio, we're going to go with Barbados Books at twelve to one, and that's two and a half points each way, as you can see on the screen there. Um, again, if you are um, Back in this and you're gonna be on it then uh, good luck to you um, okay we'll move on straight on to the second selection and I'll just um, find my notes um, the second selection comes in the marsh novices chase now I've just spoke to you there about Envoy Allen being um, one of my 
main selections for the uh, for the festival, and I do think he's a very good selection and a, a you know a banker, probably the most likely banker of the festival, and that's saying something with the uh, level of horses that there is, you know, out there that are at short prices. But I just think he's very very solid and will take some beating. Um, you know the pro the prospect of him and Monkfish eventually meeting in a Gold Cup next year is absolutely thrilling, and we just got to hope that the that they stay safe really, and uh, both end up getting there over the course of the next year. That said, for my um, portfolio, I don't like backing favourites, and I'm going to take a punt on something. There is a without market. Um, there, which I'll talk about in a minute, and I'll talk about why I've not gone down the without market. Um, there's a reason for it, uh, just in terms of prices. But uh, my selection for the Marsh Novices Chase is another English raider in the form of Nicky Henderson's Fusil Raffles. Um, Nicky has took him Novice Chase in his one two races over two mile um, before he got pulled up at Cheltenham. Um, behind the, in the race that El Dorado Island won back in November, he was then stepped up to two mile uh, seven and ran a, ran an absolute cracker. Um, he, he stayed on really well. He finished really tired. Um, he, he he got across the line beating Lieutenant Rocco really late on, um, and that was that was on the twelfth of December that race, and we've not seen him since. Now. The reason for that will be because he, because he finished tired. He looked he looked really tired crossing the line, and I think they've just sat him out just to get him fresh. He goes well fresh, so I think they're just going to get him fresh for the festival and stick him stick him straight into the marsh. Um, Nicky Anderson does have all art as well, but with him, he's fallen twice now, and even the races that he hasn't fallen in, his jumping leaves a bit to be desired. So um, I think Fusil Raffles will be the main charge for Nicky Henderson. At the minute, we have got a field of uh, Cat and Brownie entries. There is supposedly uh, for the Marsh at the minute, but obviously the field's going to cut up uh, massively, and you're probably going to end up with a fairly small runner field here for the simple fact that. Um, Envoy Allen is here and there'll be a lot of horses doing all they can to avoid Envoy Allen and, and coming across him. Now, the the flip side of that for um, for trainers looking to avoid Envoy Allen is they're going to have to come across somebody. You know, they've got the Arkle, they've got um, Shishkin and Anergamine, they've got the RSA and they've got Monkfish. So they can't just avoid all of them. Um, but I think if I was a, an owner, I'd rather take on either of the other two than Envoy Allen, to be honest. So I can see this field ending up being not a massive field. Um, another, but I do think Fusil Raffles will, will be there. He's rated 152 at the minute. Going down the betting, you've got an Ergamine second favourite, won't be here. Then you've got Shamblu and All Art. Shamblu is a horse I'm not a massive fan of. I do think this is the right race for him, but I just don't think he'll be as good as some of them in here. Um, Royal Pagar won't run here. Chatham Street lad, yeah, but not a horse I'm a massive fan of, or, or not a massive fan of in terms of this race. Uh, Franco de Port, no, no form at this, um, at this distance. Um, so you know, I know a lot of people do think he'll be an ideal marsh horse, but I'd rather see something that's just come out and sort of, um, sort of done it at this at this level and few. So raffles, like I say, the last day stepped up to the two and a half mile trip. Um, yes, he finished tired, but it was his first go at it. He'll come on for that run. He's been left out since, and I think Nicky Anderson will have him as fresh as a fresh as a daisy for this race. And I do see him playing uh, a part. Now, in terms of the market, like I said, he is twenty to one. Um, there is the without Envoy Allen market to go off if you wanted to. Now, the reason I'm not is because he's six to one without Envoy Allen. Now. If you're going each way at 20 to 1, you're getting 4 to 1 for the place, which is second and third. Or you can go 6 to 1 without Envoy Allen to win only. Um, and I, I just, I fancied the 20 to 1. I'd rather go with the bigger odds. Um, will he beat Envoy Allen? No, he won't. But there's all the chance that Envoy Allen, not all the chance, sorry, but there's a slight chance that Envoy Allen 
you know, something could happen. He might not end up there. And then I'd rather have that 20 to 1 player going into the race. Um, so, yeah, that's where that bet is. Like I said, Fusil Raffles at 20 to 1 for the Marsh. Norris's chase is going into the. Uh, the, the portfolio and hopefully can uh, can at least grab a place should Envoy Allen end up at the race. Okay, so just having a quick look back over the portfolio and where we are to date. Uh, as you can see there, we'll go down from left to right. Uh, Real Steel is more or less a, a dead bet, if you like. Um, just don't know what's happened to him this year. He's, he's not showing any sort of ability at either two and a half or the three mile trip. So, not really expecting that one to anything to come of that. Let's be clear about it in the bumper. Uh, you're probably going to be struggling for him to win the bumper now if he does go. I don't know if he's going to end up going or not. Maybe each way claims at best, but I do think this is a really good horse going forward. Probably going to do some damage over obstacles, but. He's been beaten now by both Kilcrut and uh, Sagerhard, and I don't really see how he's going to overturn the form there. Um, on to Goshen in the champion hurdle. He's not one I'm totally 100% giving up on. There is a good horse in there somewhere, but he's going to have to find some, uh, rekindle some form and very sharp. I don't know if they've 100% sorted this heart problem out that, the, that they had, but hopefully they can and he can come back and run a, run a decent race for us. Uh, main fact in the stairs hurdle is of a similar thing. Um, his last race, he was absolutely nowhere. Um, they're hoping that, you know, they said he was, he never actually ran his race that day. There was clearly something amiss. So hopefully he can come back and run a much better race. Uh, Riviere, they tell similar thing in that we don't really know if she's going to end up in the mayor's novice or not. Um, Gordon Elliott has got some big decisions to make uh, in terms of his juveniles. That's for sure. Um, Energamine for the Arkle is probably my best bet and still my most confident bet. He is currently 11 to 4, best priced, and was 20 to 1 when we put him up. Um, I think he'll win the Arkle, and I still think he's overpriced at 11 to 4, considering the price that Shishkin is. Uh, he has done clearly more than Shishkin this season, and the price difference is too big. Uh, Min, slightly unfortunate last weekend that he, he just jumped um, a little bit suspect early on and ended up landing on the top of a fence more or less and was swiftly pulled up by Patrick Mullins. Um, little rumour I heard was that he might be injured, um, providing he isn't injured, I still fancy him for the Ryanair, um, he can sort of put a line through that one, he's got good form all round with the exception of that and I still think he'll turn it on come the festival. If I hear um, any further things that he is injured um, and it comes out that he is injured and likely to maybe miss the festival or touch and go whether he gets there, I will be putting another selection up for the Ryanair um, because I, I, I have another one. I've had another one sort of uh, in mind for, for a while who I, I might have even put up to start with. I don't think he would be as a confident a bet as Min, but he's a horse that... I didn't know where he was going to go at the time and I'm pretty confident he'll end up in the Ryanair now and yeah I would change my bet to him but we'll see. Fury Road for the Stayers Hurdle is still overpriced in my opinion at 20 to 1 um, and I'm quite happy with that bet. Uh, Royal Pagar for the National Hunt is another bet that I am really happy with however could end up going to the Gold Cup. I'm worried about that because if he was mine he would end up in the Gold Cup. Um, However, I think he'd be a red up favourite and would absolutely romp the national hunt should he um, should he turn up there. So we it's just a waiting game with that one. And then you've got the two selections in from today. Um, so yeah, that's how we're looking. That's where the uh, bets are at the minute. I've got some uh, other videos coming up very shortly where. I'll be taking a bit of a sort of in-depth look at each of the main grade ones, just giving you your stats and your, uh, you know, all your figures and your trends from the races. If stats and trends and whatever aren't your thing, those races probably won't be for you. But I like to get delved into them to see where we are. In, you know, if you've got a red up favourite, is it a race where favourites normally win, uh, and, and just things like that. They, they're going to be coming out very shortly, and also the Cheltenham preview evening. Um, that is looking like it's going to be on Saturday the 13th of March um, before, just before the festival got a um, panel of uh, Bob Champion booked uh, the, the preview night will be 
in aid of Bob's Cancer Trust, the Bob Champion Cancer Trust. There'll be a small fee to pay in order to watch the preview evening and all of that money will go to uh, Bob's Cancer, Cancer Trust. Um, Bob is always on the panel that, for the preview evening that I host up locally to where we live. Like I say, that's going to be online this year. We've got Phil Kirby booked um, and we've got the jockey Sean Quinlan booked at the minute. One or two others uh, in discussions with and will be confirmed and exact times and confirmed dates will be put up on my um, Twitter feed very, sh very, very shortly. And uh, that should be a cracking evening uh, where we can get the insights of some of the uh, some of the pros, if you like. Okay, um, thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you back the bets and follow, good luck. Um, I have noticed, or it has been pointed out to me, that where I put the anti-post portfolio up at the end of the videos, it doesn't have the stakes on that we've put up for each of the um, um, each of the selections. So as of the next video, I'll have those added on. And it won't be long before the next video is up because I do have one or two selections kind of already made. Um, so yeah, they'll be uh, they'll be up shortly. All right, I hope you all have a good weekend. Um, good bit of racing to come. Uh, don't know if I'm going to be doing a preview for this weekend or not. And hopefully it'll go ahead because we've had a lot off with the weather already. We don't need any more, do we? Okay, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all soon. Cheers.